Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the UI Breakfast uh, webinar space. We have two amazing guests today. They can wave. Uh, this is Kurt Elster and Nick De Sabato. Hi. So today we are doing session two of the teardowns. We've got plenty of submissions the last time and we thought it's going to be unfair if we just don't dig into them, which doesn't mean we're going to cover everyone today either, but still. Uh, we have a nice lineup of websites today, and why don't we dive into them? So, can everyone see the screen all right? Oh, I could see it. Absolutely. Awesome. I see uh, a, a beautiful website should... with four calls to action and so many calls nonsense to positioning. I actually... Right. I'm pretty okay with the positioning, but I'm kind of confused as to why I'm at the website Full Circle Solutions, and then the logo says Full Circle, and then they're talking about Saucery. Like, why not I, make it about Saucery? I opened up a translation uh, site and tried to translate Saucery just in case I missed something in English <laughs> language. No, and, no, you uh, didn't. No, uh, but the site looks gorgeous. There is a little bit more um, downstairs. I feel there is, like, a little... You, you don't see it here, but there is like little acceleration, like someone is messing with my my scroll controls. Which uh, scroll jacking is, is the worst. Don't do that. Mm, it just it's a little bit irritating because I'm no longer in control of my stuff. So these are sorcery. I think it's like sorcery sorcery um, because the hat and everything. Um. So let's see. The splash image is beautiful. And. Uh, one of the reasons I picked this site is that they have four call to action buttons, equally beautiful, and with no accent on a single one. This is not good. You guys, any opinions? Uh, I think that all of those make sense. The why link in the header is kind of weird. Um, why are products and pricing divorced from one another? Is the goal to get somebody to download? Um, I would move support into the footer. I always suggest moving support into the footer because it doesn't focus on revenue generation. Um, if I had to pick one, I would probably go on trial license, to be honest, um, because I, I don't really even know what the difference between downloading and a trial license would be. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of what I see above the fold here. I also have no idea what the little cartoon balloon with the, the light bulb is in the bottom left there. That's weird. Let's try. Probably some chat of sorts. What? It's a feedback forum. That's confusing. I think that could go easily without causing much, much loss to the site. Oh, it does scroll, Jack. I'm playing with it in a different tab. Uh. <laughs> so I think just to add clarity, I would say, you know, let Saucery buy full circle, unlock the full value of Sauce Labs. Like, I like the name Saucery. It's a tool for Sauce Labs. It's just initially I was confused as to what Saucery was or who it belonged to or what the service was. I didn't get that it was a piece of software uh, for automating Sauce Labs. Mm -hmm. um, so I think just that that little, those two words, Saucery by full circle, just to tie it together. Can we, uh, I rarely ask this, can we scroll all the way down to the footer and just poke at that for a moment? This is not good. Um, for a lot of reasons. Um, the About Us has possibly, it's it's not a good positioning. Um, it's cool ways to deliver awesomeness doesn't actually tell me anything. Uh, nobody cares about when you were founded and, or really even where you're based. Um, and I'm the quick links that Andy Parker just mentioned this on the, the chat, uh, they, he said they, they are by no means quick. Um, that is true. <laughs> you need to pair this back to three or four links that aren't also in the header because you have a sticky header. So that's kind of weird. Um, the pin um, doesn't look like, a well, when you hover it, it looks like it's a link and it just says Melbourne, Australia. But like, where in Melbourne? Like what? what neighborhood? Like, I know what a Melbourne is. Like, that's that's a little bit confusing. So there's just like a lot of structural and architectural issues with this here. Um, above this, you have the actual revenue generating packages, um, but I'm unclear what they are, and I'm also unclear whether Junit four or JUnit or Joan. I'm very confused about that. We is, are uh, all not in the in the in the target audience, obviously, but. Fair. 
there's got to be a way to calm that visual noise down because these are logos, but 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 they should be kind of streamlined. Do you remember Windows ninety five? The icons here look like they are from Windows ninety five. Um, also, the three packages are not centered on Chrome, at least. Um, I would uh, horizontally center those. Uh, yep. They oh, that was driving somehow... me. I could figure out why it was driving me crazy. Yeah, it's it's off center. Yeah. And it's the same price, which is very very unusual for tiers or packages. Um, and it has like that PayPal credentials and PayPal. Uh, you might use it if you have to, but don't declare it on the pricing grade. Like you can do that later uh, on the payments page. A big clear button is enough uh, underneath the value prop here. Probably if you explain the icons with text, what is that? Uh, Selenium and uh, Appium. If you just mentioned that in text, that would make sense, but mm, I have full impression that this is targeted for developers, but there we have text uh, for managers and for developers. And uh, for managers, you definitely have to somehow justify those packages below because they probably don't make sense of any of those. What I would the get double free. call to action is weird too. Like buy now, credit card logos, try free. Wait, so do I start a trial or am I buying it? What I would mm -hmm. give for a heat map of this page, I would love to see what the activity looks like on email this to my manager and what the relative prominence is in each of those header links. Um, I bet a lot of people are just beelining for download because they're like, free thing! And then they get the free thing and then they close your tab. And I don't think that's exactly what you're going for here. Mm -hmm. So the things that you're writing for managers are um, very likely to be applicable to developers. It's just the manager stuff is going to be more real life, real English. So just write it for managers and hope that developers will dig into the features page. I would say so for the sales page. What's your take on the language here, guys? Um... You know, many of the managers probably were developers at some point, and it's probably good to have that there, but I would maybe break it out as its own kind of landing page and use Google AdWords to target in a more focused way. What, think about what your target market is and just hammer away at that. If it's for the developers, which it seems like because you're trying to convince the manager, then make it all about solving the developer's problems and assume that the manager is smart enough to read into it. I guess so. So focus would be nice. Like split split doing things like that is not a good thing. Definitely. So just once again to recap that landing pages like this one need to have a single important call to action. This time probably be the big green button for for free download of that. So you hammer that on top and you should make it more prominent in the pricing grid. Which, by the way, we did some... Uh, experiments and the best practice for the pricing grid is to be placed on a separate pricing page while the landing page hammering a single green thing with a download and an email opt-in because people go to the pricing page to look for the pricing but they might sign up on the landing page anyways yeah there is a separate page so you might try removing that from the home page as well yeah. Focus on benefits. There's a lot like go through and think about the one thing. You have to pick one. One thing that you want somebody to do on this page. What is the next step? Focus on it. There's like Which so true. calls to action. Download it to start a trial is what I would assume. Right. Exactly. Maybe. Um here we see the icons with the labels, which we clearly like the origins of these icons are themes and you have these icons and then you have to come up with copy for them <laughs> that's how it usually works and here we go totally pointless things um i mean they yeah, look right. nice it, none of it means anything you can just take that whole thing out reference activate and go like uh for <laughs> for, for how like what exactly plumbing sorted save time be productive straight away of course how would i be not target it well, I would, I would doubt that because the copy isn't targeted here. So you could come up with nice language for these items easily if you spend extra half hour thinking about benefits to people. 
So yeah, I it's think an that's easy a, win. That that sub or under there, if you use Sauce Labs, you will want saucery. Well, why? What does it do? What ben yeah, like what Jane said, what the, what are the benefits of it? Because I just glaze at that whole section. And it's not because it's a bad section, it's because it doesn't actually communicate what the upside is for the customer. Yeah, I understand that it's autom you're automating cross device testing on Sauce Labs. Like I've I've put that together, but I don't get how it works. You know, screenshots, you know, might be useful here, a video explaining it. Or something of uh, some explanation how it works and what exactly it brings to the table besides time and ready for use. Yeah, let's move on to the next site. Yeah. Uh, I guess yeah, it's a beautiful site. Some clarity wouldn't hurt and a single you... call to action that never hurts either. <laughs> yeah. I mean this site really just needs copy editing. All right. Next site is a consulting site. Oh, sorry, I forgot to read in the important things first one, but let me dig out uh, information for this one. Just a second. So it's digital strategy consultant. Uh, consulting for B2Bs in industrial development, uh, large service businesses, consultants. Mm -hmm. um, the issues are just getting started. I'm desperate, desperate in capital letters to show that I'm not another digital agency as there is such little understanding about digital among my buyers. Uh, instead, I need to present my business as a provider of digital strategy and digital analytics. Thanks for considering me. Well, Great to have you here. Mm, this is a text-driven consulting sites, or site, which we all love to see. Mm. But let's scroll. We have some explanations here. And we'll have to drill into copy here a little bit, I think. How we help, we can help is good. Is everything visible, guys, as I'm scrolling? I'm seeing yeah, I can see your whole browser window, mm -hmm. at least, I think. <laughs> All right. So there we go. We have service stage outcome. We have a little pricing grid of four. Mm. Uh, see here, prices are great. Uh, I mean, mentioning a price is good. Then we have a big, frankly speaking, it looks rather sleazy. We have a, a very, very big uh, call to action button. Yeah. This is not professional. Um, yeah, the whole site's really, really, pro really professional and nice, and that thing sticks out like a sore yeah, thumb. You, you lead it looks like a banner of, ad. You lead with all of this elegance, and then you do a giant bright red thing. Like, I get why you've made it the most prominent element on the page, but it doesn't need to shout this loudly. Um, and I and agree that it's like a banner ad. When you expand a button to full width, it doesn't necessarily make it look like a button anymore. That's dangerous. It looks like a red thing. Um uh, Click here, tries hard. Yeah. So the page looks with the pricing grid for services. And then we have a section which is called uh, What Are We Like as a Partner, which uh, um, dumps out values. And there is no more call to action information on the bottom. That's it, like, period. Yeah. Which is not good. You should have. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> What are the nine ideas? I'm kind of curious about, and I'm also curious about the organization of the content here. Like you have the the offerings kind of three quarters of the way down, and then it's like what it's like to work with us at the bottom, which seems a little out of order to me. Um, you position. want to see nine ideas? Yeah, let's take a look at nine ideas. <laughs> You're going to scream when you see it. Oh, no. Click it. Pictures. Oh, no. It's it's just like nice things. Oh no. We build real relationships and we hug our clients and we're okay. we, we are we don't professional integrated we don't and... I'm going to credit uh, I'm going to be really positive about this one and credit 37 signals for their influence on this in like 1998. They put together the 37 signals manifesto and I think if you google this you'll be able to find like an old copy of it but they had 37 different points of what they did and it read like this. It wasn't quite image, headline, badonk, but then everybody who ripped it off, knowingly or unknowingly, um, did this horrible job of it. And <laughs> I would, um, yeah, there you go. Kurt just pasted the link in the chat. So um, I, 
what does it mean to be creative or businessy? Like businessy. I would, I would pray you're businessy. Like there, there's a lot of things. Go through and audit this for things that look like they're trying too hard. Like obviously you're businessy. You're a B2B company. You're serving B2B companies. Um, there's a way to, to show without telling that you're business. That's a great way to say it is, yeah, show without telling. And I think like that homepage does like it, I tell, it absolutely says businessy. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's great. But as a designer, I do like like the subtle visuals here and there. So you could take like three of these, not like twin, not, not nine, but three and um, come up with captions that make sense from the benefit standpoint of, or describing your services in a more precise way and slam them onto the homepage just to entertain the user a little bit. What do you guys think about that? I think the intention of nine ideas is excellent. Um, and you're right. I think we like, let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater, taking some of these icons because they are beautiful and these concepts and just uh, working them into um, the homepage would make sense. Even maybe like float left a few of these icons with the text just to break it up a little bit. Yeah. If mm -hmm. you have to make your manifesto its own whole separate page, it has to be for a very, very good reason. And it's also just very content thin. Like drop it into the homepage, figure out a way to massage it well. Um, but like so much of this is vague and hand wavy. If you look at your copy and you think this could apply to any other agency, get rid of it. Rewrite it so it's more specific. Right, exactly. Integrated, welcomed. Like, <laughs> who, who isn't creative in their agency? I mean, I would pray. <laughs> like, I strive every day to be creative and businessy. I mean, I know, and it's great. I strive to be creative and businessy, and I occasionally succeed at it. <laughs> and, but like, all of your competitors do that. Literally all of your competitors do that. Patrick McKenzie would go crazy happy about including uh, <laughs> including the phone number in the headline uh, because like they he loves it. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I'd love to accentuate these little diagrams here because uh, I have a very smart consultant brother, but he also falls into the same trap when he plans his homepage. He's trying to make it like an article explaining the gist of his service with diagrams and stuff. Well, if a person has to dive into diagrams, that's something wrong about your explanation. You kind of have to figure out an idea how to explain it in five phrases in the headline and then just hammer down a few benefits and big have a big contact button down there. So save this for articles. This is great for articles, but not good for the landing pages because there's a few of those. And frankly speaking, they don't look too professional. Maybe investing a few hundred dollars into infographics or even a few uh, fifty dollars in info infographics would benefit you a ton. Honestly, if, if you've you got an Apple Pencil and an iPad, it, you'd already get 90% of the way there with that. Like you can still do the hand-drawn stuff like Seth Godin does this. But when you do it on like paper by 53 or something like that, it just looks way more professional. And the goal is to yeah, like doing this, uh, or consistency there. I like the idea of doing the hand drawn stuff. When the few times I've done this, I literally did it on a piece of paper with a pen or marker, and then scanned it, and then it it doesn't look quite. Um, this looks too much like MS Paint. I think is the problem. I love mm -hmm. doing it on post it notes, but you have to be a good drawer, right? Like um, you have to have like a designy feel to begin with. And Kurt is a designer, and you're a designer, so you you've had success with it. I know and other a, people don't a, have as a much. good block print. <laughs> right. So if the, your point is to hammer down that you're a different agency, say that right there in the first line, how you're different from others, right? Yeah. Your position a struggling is point. a rare moment. An agency website came across and teardowns and we're not ripping your positioning to shreds. Like your positioning Yet. is... <laughs> Yes. Okay. I would give it a B plus try harder. The thing that's missing from your positioning statement is a statement of uniqueness. What differentiates you specifically from competitors? And um, that's missing here and should be there. Um, but, and you seem to have a clear grasp on it. This does not seem like a giant existential question for you to answer, unlike many other people. So definitely take a look at that. 
honest, helpful, and obsessed with client happiness. Just essentially, I mean, this coupled with the nine ideas of saying, hey, we're really professional. Give us a try. Like, it's just, it's not, this should be the baseline. Yeah. I mean, I would pray that every design agency is professional. I know that is not always the case, but. So they want to provide, prevent, uh, present the business as a provider of digital strategy and digital analytics. So figure out like a unique feature that's unique about your way of that strategy. Maybe this time it's going to be simple or like, I don't know, transparent. That would be too obvious. <laughs> um, maybe you do it in seven days. Maybe you do it like uh, on a piece of paper, something interesting and uh, uh, maybe it relates to your way of doing things. Maybe it's a unique quality, something not as blunt as like businessy business. Shall we move on to the next one? Yeah, I think, All right. I think we're good. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, Fog Creek software, which is a very, it's a famous thing to me and I'm thrilled that we have it here. <laughs> yeah. So Allison submitted this. Uh, the website is about developer tools, help desk, uh, issue tracking, code control for teams of all sizes and types. Four, product managers and team leads, specifically ones looking for an efficient way to track and manage work. And the problems here is uh, to increase product trials and conversions. Mm, mm. Pretty classic. Okay, so... Some clarification uh, in the headline. <laughs> Yeah, let's make the future. Um, I know what Fog Creek is. Uh, if you don't know what Fog Creek is, you probably know them from two products that they make that are Trello and Stack Overflow. They also make Fog Bugs, which is an issue tracker. Um, and you mentioned that in the third paragraph, right? Also, I had no idea that that's who this was. Oh, yeah. So that's... <laughs> I think that the biggest takeaway that I can say here as a, a like baseline, just um, are you an agency? Like, okay, well, you're hiring the team, right? But then you have this product, right? And you have Trello, Stack Overflow, Fog Bugs, all those things. Um, and you're trying to get people in on that, right? So there's, I, I sense that you have a lot of competing interests on what's going to probably be on this page, right? You have the suspicion, which is probably not entirely justified, that people are going to find Trello and Stack Overflow on their own terms and that they have their own, you know, separate funnels. That's fine. Um, but you don't even make that prominent, and you should be proud of it. Like, um, maybe that's further the, down the page, but yeah. Uh, something like we are the proud creators of Trello and Stack Overflow, et cetera, yeah, et cetera. That. We had a different mm -hmm. idea, different from what? Fox uh, bugs. Is that coded language? I'm unclear. Coded, not coded like sociologically, not like programming. Um, tons of links in the footer. Um, so we need to be clear with the purpose of this page. If you want people, it, it can be credibility. So it's like an authority building site. That, but it sounds like you want to increase product trials and conversions. Then it needs to be like a product hub instead. Yeah, I would even go so far as to make it just a like, here are all of the things that we do. Uh, here is the next step you want to take if it sounds interesting to you. And I would even go so far as to go on the gradual engagement side of things and be like, what's your email address? Great, you enter your email address. Automatically mails you a temporary password and a link to reset it and gives you a Trello board with a tutorial. And slots you into a five-part drip campaign that teaches you how to use Trello and what it is and what value it provides. Um, Open it in a new tab. Uh, if you want other people to take a look at these products, um, make sure that you're not breaking them out of this. Otherwise, you're just going to get an insane bounce rate from here. Um, you have fog bugs, but also like maybe developers understand this, but there are like four different kinds of fog bugs. And that strikes me as a little bit weird. I would maybe slot them into a general fog bugs page and be like, what is the problem? Right, you've got get started here. That's exactly what needs to be happening. But then you have fog bugs, and then there's like four different product suites for it on, on the homepage. Um, so I'm I'm a little bit confused about that as well. You have to be a little bit creative, but because you are an authority, and uh, you can pull off things like um, Basecamp and Dropbox can, because you are already 
them, essentially. Um, and that kind of uh, makes you a little bit more unique than other people who are absolutely unknown because you can pull off very minimal and, you know, basic things. Kurt, what's your take on this? Yeah, I was, l this is so far outside um, my clientele, but I mean, number, my initial impression, of course, is the site is beautiful. I love, I mean, even the fact that the, the text column is left aligned, like there's a clear, beautiful eye to design here, which I like a lot, but I think they bury the lead. I mean, like who doesn't use Trello and, and love it? Like who doesn't use at least one of their, their products? Like we've been on Stack Overflow and um, seeing, you know, having that buried, bearing the lead here. Like I would, I would lead with that. Yeah. It's like, cause that's what would grab, I, that's what would grab my attention anyway. It reads to me like fog Creek. We made stack overflow and it's like, come on. You literally yeah. are the subject of an internet meme of Photoshopping O'Reilly covers like own it, you know? Yeah. That's something. To be and it's, I mean, it's a, it's almost stack overflow is, is almost a, a selfless thing that just helps how many people on a daily basis. And that, that is something amazing. Yeah, it helps me. I'm honored to even be ripping this part right now. But like, there's also like hyperdev is buried down here. I didn't even. It took me five scans to to notice it. Um, so just like there needs to be a better hierarchy and information architecture to this right now. And um, and and a, I'm not going to say focus because you do like ten different things. And most of those things are great on their own terms, but it's almost like you're actually kind of compared to like Alphabet, as weird as that sounds. You're like a holding company that runs all of these other branches of things. And you may have the same developers working on multiple products, which is fine internally. But in practice, none of your customers care about that. They're not thinking about Trello when they're Googling Stack Overflow to solve a problem, right? Mm -hmm. Alphabet's website, um, by comparison, is just a letter from Larry Page. Of course, it is. Mm -hmm. that's, that's <laughs> so, from the from from the composition standpoint, I'm not enjoying this kind of composition because it's very to me it's quite hectic because we are putting like philosophy um, along with uh, some products and not all products, by the way. I think that it would make sense to say a little bit more about your philosophy in a long longer form sales copy here and then maybe do like cards appearance for all products not just fox bugs below so that people can see this is a landing page with card view and each card represents a piece of your software and maybe a few qualifying words on each would make sense yeah Typographically, it's kind of incoherent. I've counted six typefaces so far, um, and that counts logo typefaces. And your margins, just look at even the margins of this particular page. They're, it's almost random. <laughs> yeah. So a little bit of clarity in composition and uh, just organization of this would really help. But it's, it's tough for us mortals to judge such a company, but <laughs> please forgive us, if anything. <laughs> The chat now, uh, I hate those chat roles. I generally recommend removing them unless you have a very specific business case. And given how catch-all this page is, my strong suspicion is don't need it. Yeah, I, you know, A, only, you know, if you can man them, have them, and then B, only then if um, you can use it to actively bust objections that for some reason you're not breaking uh, on the site's copy itself. Exactly. Let's move on to the next one. We have Envoy. Let me dig out the information for you. This is a visitor registration iPad app. How That's cool. great. We see it in the headline. Yeah. Uh, the target audience is technology businesses, which should probably be more clear. And there are no particular pain points I mentioned. Right. The site let me design wise, this desperately needs some white space. This is it feels very tight. Yeah. You're you're leading with the logos you're... like two pixels below the, the call to action button, which is Ugh. just I'm dying. Yeah. I'm you're dead. gonna be impressed with the amount of white space you see below. Oh, oh this looks beautiful. That's great. The, yeah, there is more. What? I love screenshots of software and software pages. There we go. How'd you do this mm. so well and then 
well, make the top so tight. I think I need exactly. to just start interviewing people as to like that have what I believe to be terrible mastheads and they have amazing like body copy. And what's probably happening, my this is again a complete speculation that is broader than just envoy.com. It's that 25 people want to like levy their design opinion at the masthead because it's above the fold. And so you have this beautiful, amazing page. And then what happens is you're actually working against good copy, good positioning, good business statements, and even good typography in the masthead. Cause this is great. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm eating this up. Yeah. I, Fitbit. Fitbit. Fitbit the onion. Oh my God. It's Pandora. dope. You work you for should have fantastic that. company. Gusto, God. they're my payroll system. All right. Twilio. There we go. I don't like the, the carousel, but like we're kind of, this is a rare moment where I've seen someone get captivated by a carousel. <laughs> <laughs> like we kind of got owned on Yeah, this. I mean, if the content is really compelling and I can control it. For visitor registration. Shopify. The there we go. Door. Yeah, the background is so weird. The Maybe GoPro has a bad logo, but it looks photoshopped. Like, this is great. And yeah, I don't know. Like, I have, I have like the typical quibbles, like pair back your header navigation. Um, I'm unclear what the difference between store and pricing is, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Sign up should probably match the cosmetics of start your two week free trial. Um, but other than that, like, and the you have a video there, which is probably dope. Um, and the preview image is not a screencast, which I've seen before, where it's just like a browser window that's empty. Um, then looks great. It looks like stock, like a pleasant stock photography that doesn't read like stock photography. Um, Discus like seems a... to be using that too. <laughs> Yelp. Yelp. Discus. <laughs> it looks like they tried to cram so much above the fold that like make your front desk doesn't have a top margin and the logos don't have a margin at all. And like, and if someone paid so much attention to like this, the rest of the site has a clear vertical rhythm and it's so beautiful. And like, let's, let's just, whoever designed everything below the fold, let's let them go back and revisit the masthead. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's true. So they have like 20 amazing logos and that deserves like a whole grid of space on the, on the site, like here. Uh, below, give, maybe give on the one, second or third screen. Give one designer the keys to the Corolla on the entire masthead and fight everyone who interferes forever. This thing's so cool, I want to use this in my house. I think there is more logos here. There is uh, Reddit. So Hello? basically everyone is, is using that, this thing. Does that mean... Kurt, is your help desk is your right. house big enough uh, to mandate a help desk? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's you know, with at the rate the children are multiplying, I think so. Your kids start asking for you on the help desk. <laughs> I'm here to see Kurt Elster. <laughs> You're six for playtime. <laughs> the that's yeah, the five year old says, Kurt, so, can we can we beat up you? Like, yes. You have to put the request in, though, and schedule it. The product looks fantastic. Like It really does. Now I want to have a help desk in the front of my house. That's not just the dog. Okay. They say that Camel is a horse designed by committee, and here's a masthead designed by committee. It looks designed... So everything that... It looks designed by committee or A-B tested into the pavement, and... I think that you need to just fix the masthead and give it a new baseline and make A-B testing design decisions that are actually graphically coherent. And you can have your cake and eat it too on this. A-B testing does not necessarily result in a cracked out ugly thing that hypnotizes the customer. Um, you know, if you, you wanted to hire someone who's really good at A-B testing, I know a guy. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Um, um, right. So the, the, the headline is subhead structure is very unclassic here. Make it clear, simple font for the headline, simple smaller for fonts for, head, for subhead, because now subhead looks like caption for the button and it shouldn't be really. Make them go together in a classic combination. And um, 
experiment with moving the video down a little bit. Delightful scans is the most prominent element on this page because it animates. And I'm sure that somebody in creative was like high fiving in a boardroom when they came up with that, but I don't think it's actually helpful. <laughs> So there is a thing with these, um, um, you know, dimmed backgrounds, you really have to make the fonts that are on top of it, very, very clean, simple, and with tons of white space around, because otherwise, it turns into such cramped thing, which is not readable, neither the background nor the front, like, ground is not well visible. Unfortunately, I don't think the delightful needs a new line. Greet the guest. I don't think it needs that Greet font, frankly the speaking. Rest <laughs> a fantastic headline. Right. So the rest of the site is nice. I would argue whether you really have to send people to various feature descriptions from here. But they're subtle. That's fine. That's not, not huge, huge actions. Because you you might argue whether people are going to go wandering around instead of you know following your narrative of the sales page. But that's subject to this for discussion. But generally, it looks good. Let's see the final call to action. Envoy, the new standard for visitor registration. Start your two week trial. Looks good. There is also this paragraph below, which describes what they do. And I think it could really make its way to the headline. Yeah. Uh, also, it's a thing that's changing how visitors are greeted when they arrive at the works place. Uh, I would strongly recommend literally having a half hour meeting about whether or not to have the live chat. I mean, why? Why is it on every site mm -hmm. that I'm tearing down? No one clicks it. Every heat map I run, I end up killing the live chat within five minutes. And I'm sorry, I know you probably paid for it. It looks great. It's better graphically treated than most other live chat. But like, why would somebody do live chat when you have a contact link? Is it because you're using your own system? True. That's the closest I can see that would be appropriate is you're using Envoy to do live chat. But I don't think you are. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on to the next one. Um, this is... I watched the video, so I think it's called Case. Let me uh, let me find information for you. Ultimate access. Oh, okay. Please start uh, ripping that apart while I relog into my thing. <laughs> You will literally see something approaching the Aurora Borealis when you join this product. <laughs> Look at uh, what Logan said to chat. Above the fold looks like the front desk of a Motel 6, and the rest of the site looks like a Ritz-Carlton. I assume that was referring to Envoy. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at Caius. C-A-I-S. Case. Case Group. Case. I think it's Case. Well, the best is it's uh, Capital Integration Because there's systems a video. In the the green bar there right so it's clearly an acronym c-a-i-s kais oh yeah capital integration systems group, group. Yeah, you're right yeah the only reason we know what what it stands for is because it's in the ssl certificate this one's tough because i think like the financial product platform for the modern wealth manager uh, we're so far outside that target audience that this is tough this is going to be tough so i would take any criticisms here with a grain of salt. Okay, and this is a financial product platform, which is as vague as never, uh, targeting advisors, and there are no particular problems they're experiencing. I watched the video a little bit, and they mentioned various few real people types of advisors. Uh, unfortunately, I don't remember exactly who they were, but like, brokers and someone else. So maybe specifying one of these groups would be more beneficial thing than just mentioning an abstract wealth manager. You know, in the, and I think in the days of, they talk about ready to transfer the way you invest, watch this video now, and we don't necessarily know what this thing does. Why not just have, have the, the masthead, this above the fold thing, just be an HTML5 video? I like that it's 
it's mm. for somebody. And I like that they talk about something and they, they recommend a video, but they kind of bury the video link. And I would actually swap ready to transform with the call to action button and put it above the join case case, the press stuff, irrelevant, not focused mm -hmm. on conversion. Um, I love the login on the left. I actually like the left nav, but like you got a lot on the left nav, which is weird. What is the difference between features and products? Why do you have careers there? It could be, you know, what's the difference between careers and join? Buried. <laughs> Why is join just a text link? Why do you literally have the biggest sign that a white dude made this website, which is a vision or a manifesto? Link? <laughs> now, and is your vision be on the about where, page? Granted, you're, you're pitching this to fund managers so you know can game definitely assume game, probably but, white dudes. <laughs> right <laughs> um so it might actually be appropriate in this scenario but so let me chime in with the visual design thing a little bit because when you're talking about financial institutions and i mean as vaguely as i can describe that because I hate when I go to the bank and they show me such, you know, modern IT construction like this site, because this is not a typical site when it comes to navigation and, you know, these carousel designing things on this, right? This intimidates me even before I start reading stuff. And you really don't want to do that with clients. Maybe they're the kind of people that are okay with being intimidated. Like, I don't know if hedge fund managers fit the demo. <laughs> I, I really don't. Um that's something I would test. So we have copy, experience, flexibility. Simpler is better. Not very, not very specific. Make it more specific. Yeah, um, you got a lot of, of vague stuff in the middle. And maybe it's coded language that the three of us don't fully understand. But my suspicion is no. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the idea of the site is be transparent and obvious to like it should be specific to a certain audience, but it should be obvious for people so that they can identify that they don't belong to the target group and safely move away here. It's doing none of this. So it's pretty, pretty vague. I think this is like a software thing because we see the screenshot. So maybe having like a more specific screenshot describing what exactly it does will help. Adding the Macintosh thing, the iMac, like bezel. I sometimes test removing that and replacing it with a straight up screenshot because it gives more real estate to the screenshot. And frankly, people are smart enough to know that it's on a computer. <laughs> You're, yeah, that's what, like if you have those visual right. cues, like if you're worried about them not understanding it's a screenshot for an app, you know, then include the the Chrome for either the app or the browser if it's a web yeah. app. Because even makes, here, like, I don't know which it is. True. I want to call out a really good point that Daryl is making that um, finance guys are Windows users. And I know you deleted the Apple underneath the iMac bezel, but like no one is being fooled. Like that does that's, not. Yeah, like that's so Windows clearly people. and. An Apple monitor. So like a <laughs> the beige other... tower and like a <laughs> CRT display or something. On the topic, if you want cool mock-ups, uh, placeit.net lets you make really neat mock-ups if yeah. you're into this sort of thing. I use it fairly regularly. There, <sighs> there is uh, that subtle gradient on the background, which brings us like five years oh, yeah, back it because it. it's not flat, but that's that glow, you know. It could be easily just plain white and nothing will be lost. I think it will be like way modern. If yeah, and the rest of the site with the same exact type. Yeah, the rest of the site really speaks to like, sorry, Nick, I was no, stepping no, on good. you. Uh, and enter, it really speaks to enterprise, to finance. Anytime you see these like dark royal blues um, and very clean sites like that, that's great. That's very professional. And then the gradient really, Jane's right. The, the gradient dates it, kills it, makes it adds nothing. Just a white background and this would look 10 times better. So this is the designer in me, but every time I see these sorts of like elements that are broken out of the page, like under number one and three especially, um, I think, wow, that's going to look really powerful and really wonderful and really salesy to an enterprise. And you actually have a god-awful product. <laughs> you're going to, you're going to, basically do all of your success off of the sales team. And I don't think that's actually what you want out of this website. I think you need to provide more context and clarity around what people are actually getting. And you sort of have to do that with the tiny screenshot, but you need to go one further with it. Yeah, there is like a feature description thing. A simpler is better, but this is totally not 
totally not Where's telling me anything. Site? I would love to have a demo of this. Or click to get a demo. Yeah, live demos are hugely You're enterprise powerful. Do it yeah. instead of a join link, have a request a demo link or something like that. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on to the sure. next one. This one is has an amazing URL, oh. headphone.com. How much does it cost, I wonder? <laughs> uh, we bucks. sell headphones and personal and personal if you were if you were born in nineteen ninety one. We sell headphones and personal audio accessories to audio files. Is it the right way to say it? Audio, audio files? file. Audio yeah, files. you had it right. Hey, Jake. Audio okay. files. Um, and uh, the problems are conversion, bounce rate, general improvements. How can we humanize our brand? Uh, getting ready to do a refresh on the site soon, on the design soon. Appreciate any and all feedback. Love your work. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Jamie. That's nice. Well, this is a headphone site Kurt, that's up your value this is yeah this is a shop my <laughs> store it's headphone.com um they sell a, a ton of new product um they sell i think they have some i believe they sell some like used and refurb stuff i think they used to have a physical location or still do um but what they do that really separates them from you know every other like i drop ship crap on the internet store is they they have these very in-depth reviews of the products. So if you open up the headphones, mm -hmm. they like they take their own pictures and write their own descriptions, but they write the descriptions as a review and they make it these very like uh, unbiased reviews in that they literally do testing on the headphones. It's very cool. I like that idea. I think they don't make that clear in the header. So though. it's a big one. <laughs> yeah, and we did. Um, I actually, so this was one of my clients. We did a survey for them. You know, we did like survey their customers, and over and over, it's these audiophiles who obsess about their audiophiles. I mean, they obsess about quality of headphones and what's like the perfect headphone for this type of music and situation. And you know, they're very active on forums and community uh, in the community, and they always come back to headphone.com because of those reviews. So I think just like really leveraging that um and talking about it would would help immensely they also have very good content that learn drop down um i bet has like they have buyer's guides and stuff that are yeah they've got all kinds of explanations that are very helpful Head, headroom lamps prominent. that's their testing why isn't all of this prominent on the home page i don't know okay <laughs> i think i was reading the copy somewhere and it says um uh, I really forgot where it was. So we are like uh, best geeks on the internet, deliver, like taking care of your ears or something like that. I forgot where it was, <laughs> but it was such great copy with such great personality. And now I can't even find it again. Um, too bad. <laughs> Put it in the headline. Like we are headphone geeks taking care of your ears. I don't know. Is that a good way to say it? <laughs> the 30 day trial is an interesting notion because in most situations, I, if, please correct me if I'm wrong on this, but most headphones and especially microphones, like for health reasons, you can't return them once they've been opened um, because you literally put them on your face and inside of your ear canal. Um, and so the 30-day trial reminds me a little bit almost of like the mattress company Casper where they have 100-day trial and then they just donate it to like a shelter or something like that because they can't resell it. I always wondered about that. Yeah. Yeah, they donate it elsewhere. They can't legally sell a mattress that's been used. Um, so, and that's at least in the United States. So, um, having the 30 day trial, this guy, uh, Daryl, asked about why wouldn't I look on Amazon after the site? And there's part of your answer, right? People might be showrooming. Also, a lot of headphones, and especially premium headphones, are price locked. Um, so, Amazon actually can't sell it for more. And you end up with a lot of like third party resellers that are scammy that are selling it for too little. And, um, and with like, some of these headphones, there is a possibility that when you buy from a non-authorized dealer, like they, there are um, they void counterfeits. The yeah. Well, it voids the warranty, and there's also counterfeits in existence. Like you could, there are tons of Beats. Like Beats headphones aren't audiophile, but uh, there's tons of counterfeits of those. The Grottos that they've got featured in that featured image, definitely Grotto. Those are I love those headphones, um, but there are counterfeits of those around. Yes, so. And so I think saying like we're an authorized dealer, dialing that stuff in and playing a little bit to that fear. Can we see a but product page? A lot of the things that we're doing right now is I... recommending a lot of things around this site that don't actually exist there. <laughs> yeah. We're like, 
but like <laughs> promote the safety and purchasing that comes from an authorized dealer. And where is that? That's not anywhere. Let's go to a product. May I chime in with the two cents on the visual appearance of this banner before we go on to functionality? Oh, yeah. Just look at that lady with the green grass. Because if you see that gentleman with the audio file written on him, that's what should be on the banner. Look, it's a high quality, nice gentleman. Put him on the banner and remove that poor lady in the sunset with the green. I know that one's corny. Uh, ice talk photo grass. I like that. The, uh, the audio it's file. It's really bad. <laughs> I mean, when I think audio file and I think of yeah, like, high end audio, mm -hmm. I picture like, you know, sitting in, sitting in a Herman Miller chair with my, you know, my open back $900 headphones plugged into a tube amplifier and just really enjoying some, some great live recording. Right. And that, yeah. that audio file image exactly speaks to that. Have you been in my house lately? <laughs> I was picturing you when I did it. Thanks. <laughs> And just a little bit to tweak of to the typography to make it a tad more refined. It's going to do wonders to a business because the whole typo typography theme is a little bit too blunt. A lot of all caps, uh, not very necessary. Just hire a designer to pull, like push, pull together typography. You're going to be like fifty dollars more expensive on, on any headphone than <laughs> if you make a classier look. So let's pick one product. Fold blog and about under learn. I don't know why those both mm -hmm. need to be there. Dump contact. And oh, order. and they have, um, I remember we, we actually built this feature for them, the uh, price match request tool. So if you click that is our price too high thing, it opens a, a modal window where you can request a price match. Hell and yeah. that's how they deal with, mm -hmm. that's how they, they bust those objections with um, people price shopping to Amazon. Does that have a lot of uptake? I don't know if that... Mm -hmm. um, this confidentiality, but I'm kind of curious. This thing's been here at least a year. I assume that this this worked out for them. I don't know. Fair enough. Um, but yeah, I mean, they what I love here, they took their own photos. So many people don't do that. They wrote their own descriptions. They solicit these reviews. So you've got lots of customer reviews. And audio files are super opinionated. So they're going to tell you. They love to give you their opinion on the stuff. Um, and yeah, they even have their own video reviews now. Yeah, they're on Yacht Po. I see that. Oh, man, mm -hmm. 36 reviews on those shirts. I'm sure, no pun intended, that uh, Grottos and <laughs> Send Headphones probably have even more. Um, but, I mean, oh, make the reviews mm -hmm. narrow. They shouldn't be 100% with. Um, mm -hmm. There is some nice typography shining through, which was demolished on the <laughs> landing page, but now these fonts are good. Maybe... Just reuse them on the landing page, even though that might be Helvetic, I'm sure. But Track still. clicks to that help widget and kill it off if nobody's using it. In the bottom right there. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on to another one because we have just a little yeah. bit of time left. This site is Optimizer. And Optimizer. frankly speaking, I was hesitant about that because I really like the site. I think everything is done to the best uh, standard. So see, they, there is big call to action, small call to action. They built the computer action. too. Look at the logo right there. <laughs> <laughs> Optimizer, WordPress themes for website owners using WordPress. Duh. <laughs> That's some good positioning. I mean, you're a WordPress theme company. Hopefully I didn't misinterpret that. I like this this mm -hmm. little grid. See, here's a the benefits are yeah, solid. Here we've done a solid or this is a really good example that we've seen other people fall on their face with of you know, icon, quick headline, and then one paragraph description. Here we've really nailed nailed that describing um, those benefits. Uh, the uh, testimonials don't have uh, they don't have a carousel but instead they're sprinkled throughout the page to uh, maybe prove some other point which is a much better strategy than including all of them in a carousel. Yeah, it's clever. They used um, an envoy could do this like take the, all those wonderful mm -hmm. testimonials and then just use them to break up the content to break up the sections. I love using mm -hmm. GIFs as demonstrations like they're doing right here. Just yes. that's really great. The drop shadow could probably go, but that's a quibble. Um, 
I'm curious. I know I keep zooming in on header now, but why is support there? Why is templates its own thing? Why is features its separate page? Why couldn't we just fold that in the home page? Um, it seems to me like you've got a lot of stuff going on. What are uh, what's the live demos link? Does that take you to like a Calendly page where you can schedule a call with somebody? And oh, uh, that the no, it doesn't take us anywhere. Oh, wow, it just jumped us into the middle of the. Um, Why? Maybe fix that bug. Um, browse yeah, presets, browse user showcase. Those are two secondary calls to action that are completely lost and not focused on revenue generation. Um, they get people looking around, but I don't think you want people to look around. I think by this point, they'll be convinced or not. And they'll either beeline for pricing or they'll go to the bottom of the page and pay you. Mm -hmm. You've been using a darker background for um, for testimonials throughout. Don't do that just because you use the darker section on, on, on <laughs> above. Please stay consistent because it helps to the user uh, for their eye. Let's tear down the the pricing thing. I think it's a little bit too tall and a little bit too light, like bland. Support slow. Make the X's red. What, what does full features mean? Do a little question mark that it pops a tool tip and then add descriptive text below on a, um, on mobile. <sighs> Maybe slow. You could replace that with like two days or one day or how much is that? Because slow, you don't want to buy anything if it's slow, even if it's, you know, free. <laughs> it's not very positive thinking. Um, accentuate one plan that you want to sell it seems to be optimizer pro here. Yeah. So one thing that's interesting, the safety signs are good. One yeah. Thing that's interesting. I like the existence of Sorry. the money back guarantee, but what are the conditions of the money back guarantee? Right. Is it just, I felt bad that day. <laughs> Is it, I get the right kind of outcome <laughs> from it. Um, Find some way to anchor the money back guarantee with the potential economic upside for the buyer. It has to be an economic upside because they're taking the money and asking for the money back. So, okay, well, this should increase conversions on your website uh, such that it pays for itself or your money back. So that's pretty low bar, right? It's 50 bucks. So that seems like a pretty persuasive thing. That's also a good reason to kill off free. I think for, right? for those... Mm -hmm. For those people who shop for themes, you kind of download it, install it, then see that it doesn't work for you, and then you return it because I've done it a couple of times in my life too. And I'm not like a tire kicker. It just didn't fit yeah, my needs. Yeah. So it might be that case. Uh, maybe then it should say 30 days money back guarantee to safely try your theme or something like that uh, to make sure it fits. after the theme is launched. So you can't just be like, we didn't use it. You have to actually. Why? We didn't use it. Well, you can have money back if you didn't use it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, there are some logos uh, not could be somewhere on top. I think finishing the page with logos is not a very good idea. They are good for like intermediate content. Yeah. Yeah. And some people don't know what these are. Like they have to be super recognizable. Like will. Me, I genuinely don't I know. Just know Will people block? know what CSS author or whoop lift do or source whoop or whatever? Like, yeah, I don't know. But generally speaking, very nice site, I think. So I think we're running out of time for today. I would choose one accent color and use it for calls to action because it seems to be a little bit too subtle. What's your take on design here? It's um, pretty nice. I'm pretty okay with it. Build amazing WordPress websites within minutes seems like an overpromise um, because a lot of the times you have a theme <laughs> and you end up building most of the website and then there's one little thing that you want it to do that doesn't fit within the theme and then you have two weeks of dev time. Um, so, right. <laughs> and, and every dev looking at this knows that. 
So that seems like an objection you want to actually be more forceful in killing. But I like the. I, like the I would it's adjust. Nice. It's pretty. I would adjust the angles on this monitor because this screenshot is square and the monitor really is angled. It's monolith. just an observation. Does it cut off the featured in or is that just the screen share? Yeah, that looks like it's cut off. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That could be a factor of the viewport. Height, All right. But yeah, anyway. Yeah. So we are wrapping up uh, today's teardowns. Thanks, everyone, for being so brave and submitting uh, your websites. Let me, let me hide that so that we can wave. <laughs> Thank you all so much for uh, Thanks, hanging everyone. out with us this morning and offering so yeah. many insights and comments in the sidebar. This was terrific. Um, it's I always fun. Time. I hope you learned a lot. Yeah. Enjoy. Awesome. All right. Now go back to work. All right. Have a, have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you Later. for See being you guys. here.